you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got a video that's a little bit different to my normal ones in that most of the time I'm teaching you something or doing something positive. Um, today I've got something that's probably a little bit negative but hopefully constructive and that's a bit of a rant. Um, so in this case, the bone that I'm picking today is with managing Autodesk programs, uh, specifically Revit, um, in the fact that there's a lot of challenges we face that I feel could have some solutions that are in the better interest of Autodesk customers and users in the future. And I hope that maybe this might get some good discussions moving uh, that are probably already out there but maybe aren't moving as fast as they could. Um, so let's get started. So as pretty much every single Revit user unfortunately is aware, um, Revit is not really a backwards compatible program and as far as I know it never has been, at least since I started using it back in 2012. If you have a project that's been built in, say, Revit 2020, and for some reason you need to go back to 2019, bad luck, you can't. That's it. So it's pretty frustrating, um, and there are some reasons for this. As far as I'm aware, the main reason is because it means that the developers of the program can essentially really push the, the program for the next release without worrying about having to maintain the old file format or the old libraries that aren't going to line up to the new changes. Um, but let's be honest, things really haven't changed that much from version to version, at least at the surface level of the software. Now, I don't want to discredit the people working on Revit. I know they're working really hard to keep this beast moving, and behind the scenes there's actually a lot of things they're changing and maintaining to keep this thing moving. But at the perspective of the users, the people paying the money for this program, I can't say that I'm overly impressed by the development of this program and various other platforms that uh, Autodesk makes as well, like Navisworks and 3ds Max, which most people know are getting pretty slow and chuggy versus some of the competition out there. And I really do feel that Revit probably needs a better management system than an annual deprecating file format. I think that's really uh, proving itself to be an old and out of date business model. Now, as well as this, one of the challenges that we face in an office when managing software such as Revit or just any product in the Autodesk product suite is that there's this four years apart rule. So it's mostly related to the fact that they want to keep people within certain ranges of versions, typically for proprietary licensing reasons. In this case, if say you work in Revit 2016, you're allowed to work to 2017, 18 and 19 but outside of that, you're not allowed to. So if you've got a project in an office in Revit 2015, and you've got one in, say, Revit 2021, well, bad luck. You're gonna to have to have a special case in order to run those two versions concurrently. So this can be a real problem when the file format goes up by one every year. Um, if anything, it's just too fast. Uh, most projects last for at least four years, and some projects do have policies to not be updated as the project progresses. So I think that this is proving there's a bit of a mismatch between the way that Revit is upgraded or updated and how the industry actually functions. Now this update on a yearly basis, once upon a time, was a really exciting thing. I remember Revit 2013, 14, 15, some pretty major things coming in, especially for engineers. I recall some pretty useful tools sneaking in around that time. And obviously we got things like Dynamo as well, so there were some really heavily justified annual releases around some of those features that were quite hard for them to build in advance. Um, let's go back to Revit 2021. Now, what was really exciting in that build? Well, maybe the generative design tool? Um, I don't know, I'm not sure if that excited me that much and really warranted a whole new version of Revit for me. And I've got to say, looking at the roadmap for Revit 2022, it really looks like it's mostly little tweaks and changes to better improve the overall experience of using Revit, I can't say there's something in there that makes me feel I'm going to want to justify moving up an entire version and pushing away the lowest version I'm using just to run this version. And this brings me to one of my main arguments, which is looking at how other vendors manage the version of, uh, versioning of their software. Uh, let's say Archicad or Rhino, for example, by McNeil. They don't really push out a major version until they have to. Look at Rhino, for example. It's currently on version 7. That doesn't mean 2007. That means this is the seventh version that we felt was worth warranting a new build. And in between that, they're working with updates and patches. And in this case, it's pretty amazing that a company like that will do this because they charge a perpetual licensing system as well. So they're not actually gonna make more money 
out of their customers until they buy a new build. So it's quite different to the Autodesk subscription model which most of us have uh, been painstakingly forced onto by now. Um, so whether we like it every year, no matter what the products are, we're gonna be paying money. So at this point, the idea of having this annual uh, uh, obsolescence of the file format and the program, it really doesn't feel that justified to me. I really do feel that the developers do need to think harder about how they're building onto Revit in the future and no longer just upping the number by one to keep the stakeholders happy. In my opinion, this is becoming a, a real problem um, when trying to support Autodesk in a company. And I think another problem is that the way that the program is updated between major builds has changed a lot as well. Let's go back to say Revit 2016 and have a look at the updates for this program. Well, we can see there's actually a lot of updates and patches and not just hotfixes. They actually did put features into the program in between major releases. If we look at Revit 2021 as an example, well, we only had a few hotfixes. Nothing really changed that much between the major builds. So I feel like this year by year is actually making the development cycle of Revit more lazy. Um, and this is frustrating as a user who likes to see things change and improve. One only has to go onto the wish list or the Revit user request forums to see all the great ideas that people have um, that unfortunately year by year don't seem to make it into the program. And, and sure, they're all quite difficult to account for, but some of these things have been around for five, six, seven years, and they're still not seeing that much traction. <clears throat> so I do feel like if Revit was off the annual, um, annual update cycle, there might be a bit more pressure on Autodesk and its developers to update issues in a, a manner that's driven by time and demand, rather than keeping the, the shareholders happy by saying that Revit 2021 is now called Revit 2022, um, despite the fact it has no new icon with a, 2020, a 2022 in it um, to even justify that. So uh, it's, it's probably felt like a little bit of a negative rant, but it's one I've had to get off my chest as someone that really does care about this program and does want to see Autodesk uh, continue to be successful and relevant in their customer base. Um, but I must say I have felt the frustration, uh, especially as a consultant dealing with lots of people in lots of versions, feeling different problems in different ways. Uh, so I guess I'm inviting you in, in the comments section to, to sort of engage in a discussion with me and let me know your thoughts. Do you feel the same way? Are you more on the side of Autodesk and how they manage things? If you work at Autodesk, I'm sure some of you might be on their side because you know more about why you know these programs are managed the way they are than I do. Uh, but I do feel like I have stepped into their shoes a little bit and tried to think about why is the case, but you know, is there a better way that this can be managed? Um, and I, I really do invite anyone at Autodesk to talk to me about this in depth um, and compare the way that you manage your programs to say McNeil or Archicad and see how they can actually obtain a different user update process, which keeps them a lot more happy. Um, but anyway, and rant. So I'll be back um, next week with more uh, positive, less ranty tutorials. Um, but I, I hope this was a, a good way of sort of engaging some discussion from, from the general users in the BIM community um, in a more open manner. Um, I'm not necessarily an Autodesk fanboy 100%. Um, there are some things that they do that maybe I don't always agree with. But at the same time, I do respect the programs and the people that work there. And I hope that, you know, I haven't, you know, peed anyone off, but at the same time, that I have maybe lit a bit of a fire that, that could do a little bit more than, um, than not saying anything at all. Anyway, if you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so, and I'll see you in future videos. Thanks, take care, bye.